Hello and welcome back to Behind the Faders, the channel where we talk about all aspects of live sound mixing and live sound in general. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please give me a like and hit the subscribe button. 80%, more than 80% of the people watching this channel are not subscribed and it's just a click. It doesn't cost you anything and for me it's so relevant. So thank you in advance. Uh, in the last video, I explained the difference between a subgroup and a DCA slash VCA. So now let's get into how to use DCAs the proper way. And the first very obvious thing is you want to control multiple channels with one fader. And uh, it was true since the dawn of time that on DCA1, or VCA1, or even before VCAs on subgroup 1 and 2, there were the drums. Always. Forever. And when I started out, I of course did the same thing, because everybody else was doing it. And uh, after a while, I thought I'd never really see an opportunity or uh, the need to change the level of the entire drum kit all at once. But then I thought, who am I to question uh, the decision of these much more experienced engineers that I was working with. But after a while, uh, some of these engineers might have thought the same thing, and now all of a sudden they use two VCAs, or two subgroups. The first one being kick, snare and hat, and the second one was called upper kit or something, so that was toms and overheads. Uh, and I thought, yeah, right. That's what I thought. So I did the same thing, but then again, realizing that I always only used VCA2 or subgroup 2, because you hardly ever need to change kick and snare at the same time. It's usually either one. So I finally did my own thing and figuring out that the only group of channels within the drum kit that I want to change simultaneously were the toms. So from then on, my first VCA or DCA was toms, not the entire drum kit. Um, another misconception that I see very often is that uh, the last VCA, DCA subgroup <laughs> is called effects and includes all the effects all across the channels. And again, there is really no need to ever change the level of all the effects, the snare reverb, uh, the drum reverb in general, uh, maybe the effect chain on the acoustic guitar, along with all the vocals. And some people say, yes, but I also use it to mute effects in between songs, because I don't have a mute group for that, I use the DCA. Okay, fair enough, but still, uh, there's no need to mute all the effects in between songs. You only need to mute the vocal effects. You don't need to uh, mute the drum reverb or anything else you have going. So <clears throat> what I usually do, it depends on the number of VCAs that are DCAs that are available and, and what's on it. I Usually my last DCA is just dedicated to my delay because with that delay, it's not going constantly. I just want to capture certain words or ending of sentences. So I have that on my last DCA. And if I can afford it, the one before that would be a vocal reverb. So I can balance that out a little bit easier. But I will never have both of them together. It doesn't make sense. Okay, but where is this combining channels and controlling them with the DCA useful. Well, we talked about backing vocals, then there's maybe brass sections, keyboards. If you have a keyboard player uh, who doesn't have his own little submixer, you might get uh, like doing six keyboard channels. Combining them can be helpful. And percussions. And now you might argue, but isn't that the same deal as with drums? Lots of different instruments. Well, well, at first glance, you may be right, but uh, a percussionist is usually only playing with his two hands, so he can only use so many instruments at a time. So he might play congas or bongos and maybe hitting a, a crash cymbal every once in a while, or he might be uh, 
using his toys like chimes so it's not too much going on at the same time and instead of uh, having to find the bongo channels when you need then they need to come up or the conga channels need to come down you just have it all on this dca and you control it as you go you just ride the faders all the time whatever he's playing that's easier trust me and last but by no means least uh, it can be really, really helpful if you have a, a, a difficult situation like you have a reverberant room or you have a weak singer or both actually it can be really helpful to put all the instrument on a dca uh, drums and bass excluded but everything that fights for the same space as the vocals put it on a dca because what this allows you to do is you can now balance the entire band or the part of the band that's the problem and the vocals were on two faders that might be might be a right on the razor edge for the entire show doing this but at least it can make your life a little bit easier so with that out of the way is combining channels really the only reason to use a dca well to answer that let's get back in time a little um before vcas in the analog world there were only subgroups uh, and then vcas got invented uh, around 77 or so but there were for the first years they were only used in studios in order to kind of automate channels but then the first live sound vca desk was the midas xl3 which came out in 1980. now before vcas all the desks looked like this you had your input channels and then you had your subgroups. In this case, you had a lot of subgroups. I don't know what they were thinking back then. Was this Midas Pro series. You had 24 inputs and then you had 12 subgroups. But anyway, so after the subgroup, you had your master bus. Now, when VCAs came into the picture, all of a sudden, the large format consoles looked like this. This is a Midas XL3. So now you had half of your input faders to your left, half of your input faders to the right, and the center section with your subgroup and your VCAs. And the idea behind this is, if you look at this desk, I mean, uh, XL3 had 40 channels, at least at the beginning, when they had customized versions of that, but it was 40 channels, so 20 channels to your left, 20 channels to your right. So you can imagine that sometimes it was difficult to find some channel in between there really, really quick. Even though some people like myself got into the habit of labeling the desk in different colors for different sections, it still was a bit problematic to find a channel within a split second to quickly change something. So the idea was to stand in the center of the desk in front of the VCAs and mix everything from there. Uh, so first VCA drums, or in my case, toms, because quite honestly, kick and snare were easy to find. They were the first three channels on the desk. And most of the time, once you had dialed them in and settled them, you didn't need to get back to them very often. But that's of course true till today. Um, second VCA would be bass, regardless of if you had one bass channel or two or three, then VCA three would be your guitar stage right, even if it was just one channel, and then your guitar stage left, and then maybe keyboards, backing vocals, vocals, you get the picture. And of course, you sometimes had to compromise because at the beginning, most desks, or all desks, I think, only had eight VCAs. That was usual. And if you had a big band with lots of different sections and instruments you had to compromise sometimes of course later on but in the excel 4 and the large format desk of later on had 12 which was pretty convenient so that was the idea you stood in front of your vcas and unless you had to change any cue or something uh, you pretty much could mix the show from there without even looking and could have your fingers on or the VCAs and it was a game changer it really made mixing so much easier 
So how does that translate to today's modern digital desks? Well, that is not quite easy to answer. It's a tricky question because it's pretty much entirely dependent on what kind of desk you use. Of course, there was one invention that came with digital desks that renders the use of DCA somewhat obsolete. And that's, of course, custom layers. I mean, if, you, if your desk allows you to build a custom layer, then you don't need DCAs, at least not so much anymore, because now you have all the instrument in order that you want to be there, that you need to get to fast, and you've got the entire channel, not just the volume. Are DCA still a thing on these desks? I think yes, because uh, most of the time you have like a limited number of channels available to do your custom layer. If you don't want to jump around in layers and the goal is not to. So for example, my custom layer would probably go kick, snare, uh, toms, DCA, Bass, which might also be DCA if I have more than one bass channel. And then later on maybe a keyboard DCA and a backing vocal DCA. It all depends, of course, on how many input channels I have and how many uh, channels I have to build my custom layer on. However, there's still desks that do not allow to do that. So in that case, it's you can still do it the old-fashioned way. Especially now, the channel is not far away from you. It's hidden somewhere in another layer. And I've seen people that nowadays, they make videos about this on YouTube, that makes a 40-channel input band on a desk that has eight faders. Uh, and, well, some of them jump around the layers like artists, but I think in this case, it would be really helpful. It would if you would just go the old-fashioned way and use these eight faders as DCAs and only jump to a channel if you need to. So you have to find out for yourself. At least now you know all the options that you have with DCAs. Thanks for watching and again please hit the subscribe button and help me to help you. That's it for today. Bye-bye.